My name is Rachel and I am a travel and conservation YouTuber currently in India. And in this three-part series, I join a group of incredible wildlifers and conservationists to find the migratory routes of the missing tigers of Rantambo. And in this episode, we go back for the camera trap footage to see what was captured during the night. And we dig deeper into the stories of local villages to find out how they are coexisting with the wildlife in the area. So it's about 5.30 in the morning. Last night we came back at about 11. So it's been a very short sleep. But yesterday was a very interesting day where we hung up the camera traps and everything. Now we're actually on our way back to go and retrieve it. It is ice cold outside, and with ice cold I mean it's so cold. The climate here goes from very hot in the, uh, during the day to very cold, so just trying to wake up and adjust <laughs> to the temperature a bit. We'll stay there where we have placed the camera trap. Mm -hmm. Stay there for 10 to 15 minutes, because this is the main time of animal movement. Okay. So uh, we'll try to see a an wild animal mm -hmm. without disturbing them. We'll sit there in the car quietly, and we'll see what animals are coming there. We've arrived at where the camper trap is and as you can hear, villagers are waking up. So it is important for us to actually try and uh, get there now because we want to see if there are any pug marks or anything like this. And of course, once humans are awake, this could be disturbed. So we're going to walk out to the camera trap now and uh, yeah, get this done. Thank you. Dr. Joy, are there any pug marks? No, no, there are no. No. No, pug marks, pug marks are not there. Hmm. There are human pug marks here. I think there was a regular moment in the night in this area. Of humans? Of humans. So, no, maybe, no. maybe a disturbed uh, habitat hmm. for the night. We have made it back and uh, we're going to check out the camera trap footage. Now obviously we were also hoping for a potential sighting but it is very very foggy so this means there is enough water around for um, larger cats or any animals to actually just uh, drink wherever but would, they wouldn't have to per se come down to a water source. So we didn't make any sightings but uh, we're going to go check out the camera trap footage because there were a lot of uh, human tracks in front of the camera so let's uh, go check what was going on. Yeah, so we've got our first shots of some wildlife, I think. It's at us. <laughs> Somebody switched the flashlight on it. And then they put it down. They've been trying to take it off. This is where it stops. Okay, well the camera trap footage is a little bit disappointing because we only got a blue ball and uh, a jackal. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, but we will not give up our hopes. Hmm? <laughs> wakey, wakey. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Morning! <laughs> Daylight has arrived, and now it's time to go have some tea before we start the day. But I've got to say, like, it's been so nice to be here with this team because they are all really much into conservation in different fields. So like um, we've got somebody who has done uh, research in wildlife conflict, somebody who is like more specialized in leopards, 
and um, yeah it's really awesome to be here with other people that are so passionate about wildlife and uh, are doing their best to you know research certain topics and uh, go for the conservation of them. So um, yeah, I'm feeling uh, fully in my element here and uh, I'm really, really excited to start day number two. Hello, hello, hello. Put on my shoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The mower out there. Go on, Laura. She can't get to you, but she's not happy. And the baby's like, but bro, I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling here. And mom's like, no, no, <laughs> it's a no from me. I said no. I said no. <laughs> we have finished our morning tea and uh, now we're going to go out into the villages again because what Dr. Joy is just explaining to me is that uh, some of his team members have already done research in another area and we have done some of the research yesterday in another area. And now we just want to confirm that in the central area, between these two areas, there are actually tigers and other wildlife migrating, because that would confirm the theory that there is another wildlife corridor beyond the ones that are already known. So we're going to go into the villages now, and we're actually going to start off with an interview with a man who's already been attacked by a sloth bear uh, before. So we want to hear his story and um, listen to what their encounters have been in this area. So Dr. Joy, WWF uh, has already published a paper on wildlife corridors, right? They have chose one uh, corridor that covers uh, Ranthambore, Ramgad, Vistari and Mukundra. We are not going on that corridor. We are searching a new corridor where we have some historical evidences of tiger's movement. And in a recent few years back also, uh, we got some evidences that tiger is moving through that corridor. So we are exploring the new thing now from Ranthambo to Mukundra. Yeah, and this is of course an existing corridor, but just one that we weren't aware of prior. Uh, yes, earlier, like see, the whole area which is now uh, agricultural fields, that area a few years back or maybe you can say 100 years back, it comes under the forest only. Mm. So it is an innate behavior of tiger. If they want to move in an area, so they are moving uh, on the right corridor and that character that uh, sixth sense is all already present in all the wild animals so they are still following the same path but now it's just but agriculture now agriculture and settlement is there so there are there are the chances of conflict so yeah. we are uh, searching the new corridor and uh, we will propose some new conservation strategies to conserve these corridors with and, the help of forest department. And help probably people that are living here, right? So that and help the people and the animal both. Yeah. So it would be a win-win situation for oh. everyone. Yeah. 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 So the leg. Yeah. He's saying he was working in the farm and so they are yeah. from back side. Mm, you can see his uh, scarring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. The skin was uh, here also. So the skin was removed from yeah, the, the... by the hands. And another one is that. And when did this happen? Uh, like in what time frame ago? So in the how daytime, long ago? four o'clock. Four o'clock, and how long ago? Uh, yeah. Four months. Four months. Four and, uh, four, four and a half months. Four and a half months. Yes. Uh, before uh, celebration of uh, uh, festival of uh, lights in India. Diwali. Diwali. That's called Diwali. How does he feel now? Because he's he's had the sloth bear attack. Like, how does he feel when he's in this area or when he's working? Or now, uh, before four or four or four point half month, he was just like uh, we, and now you can see his situation. Yeah. And now this hand is not working till now. The hand is not working. Yeah. How many times in this area has somebody been attacked by a sloth bear? So he's one. One single time. 
Okay, well, we've just interviewed this man who was attacked by a sloth bear uh, a couple of months ago. And the sloth bear was out in the field with him and took away his axe. Um, so he was not able to protect himself. Now, I do want to say that the sloth bear attacks are not very frequent. Apparently, this is the first one that has been encountered here. But you can imagine the trauma that is put into him. But what it is the situation is that they are very used to having animals here and having certain wildlife here. So they have uh, many sightings. They just want also some help in how to protect their areas and stuff so that, you know, attacks can be prevented. Um, but this also confirms that this region definitely has sloth bears and other wildlife and stuff like that. Okay, so what the main thing here is, is, is that they also want uh, compensation for this man's attacks. So there is a government rule that if any of your cattle gets attacked, that you will get some sort of compensation for the cattle. But uh, he has not been compensated yet for his wounds. And of course, you can understand Understand that if you are living in such a rural area and you've got such intense, um, you know, damages, that it would be great if you can get compensation um, for what has happened, especially if cattle also get compensated. A leopard catch the goat from this area? From this house. From this house. You can shoot from inside. Yeah. Under the house. Here we have the goat pen. And the leopard has actually been able to get one of them out of here. But d did they have this uh, gate already when uh, the leopard uh, got the goat? Yeah, yeah. Leopard actually went in. All this leopard entered from this area. The leopard came in from here. Leopard entered from this area and jump out from this area with goat. With the goat. Yes. And man was standing here. He was standing here. Yes. Wow. In front of that. In front of man. the kill and everything. So the leopard killed it, but did it? It doesn't look like it has like a lot of um, meat taken from it. So yes. it would come back for this usually. No right? Actually, man was here. So leopard. Uh, leopard, no, leopard was. He was chased away. Yes. So he didn't have time to eat the yeah. eat the goat. Okay. Well, we've also been invited for a cup of chai at this man's house. Nice. Now, what I was also told is this is the first time that they've seen a foreigner in their village. So you can understand all the kids and everything. Uh, you know, are trying to walk around. Nidus, so you um, told me that he has uh, a lot of information about the tigers and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, how many tiger sightings has he had in this area and uh, that type of stuff? He has two tigers. T1, T129 and T159. And how is he able to tell which? Tiger is which? He recognized the tiger by, by the size of bung marks. Ah, by the bug marks and everything. Footprint and stripe patterns also. Stripe pattern also. And the stripe. follow the stripe pattern also. Actually, he is working for the department from last. Uh, last eight years. Actually, here is an NGO in Ranthambore. Yeah. He is working for that. For this NGO. Yeah. Within a one month, single month, yeah. a tiger moved from same track in three or four times. Three or four times they use the same in track? In a single month. In a single from month. Same track, in same area, and it comes out for water also. He has a lot of photographs. Yeah. See, tiger, same color, same color. Two tigers. Two tigers. Thank you. Thank you. Follow me. I know, I know. It's okay. I got it. Bye bye, Rishi. Okay, Ram Ram. <laughs> We've just finished up our interviews here in the village and I've got to say it was quite a nice experience just to be able to get into the village because these people are so sweet man and um, yeah, they offered us chai and everything. What I also think is really cool is that one of the guys here, he's actually working for an NGO in Rantambor so he has a lot of knowledge about tigers and um, yeah, I really loved seeing like the camera trap footage and you know, hearing about his experience of which tigers are coming through the area. So it's nice to see that people are also um, interested in uh, studying these animals. At night, actually he go to survey, to uh, patrolling that farm. So he, he patrolling the farm for? for Blue bulls and uh, he, 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 he was on survey to protect the farm uh, by the blue bulls because, because blue bulls they eat. Yes. The farm. They eat uh, farm. They eat, they farm, eat the farm. So they, they ruin the seeds. Though uh, he, he thought there was a blue bull, but uh, when he go close to the blue bull, it was a tiger. It was a tiger, and suddenly he uh, walked away from there, and he burned some crackles to frighten the tiger. Uh, yeah, exactly. And the second story is uh, when his, his missus, his wife, his wife was um, washing, washing the clothes in the clothes river. In that river. 
and from far far away he he saw he saw he saw there was a tiger and tiger was also drinking the water but he didn't tell her wife because he he think he think if i told her wife if i told my wife she would have been like she will be yeah scared she, she will be get a scared okay, if i will call her then she will also scared and uh, that's why run, run no yeah and that's maybe tiger will attack yeah Okay, so we've come to another house that we actually visited uh, yesterday because they also had a story about the sloth bears in the area and um, the German Shepherd that they've got for protection has also been attacked by three sloth bears. Um, but there is kind of a reason why there are so many animals, you know, in this area. Like if we have here the agricultural pastures, <laughs> here where the crops end, this is basically Rantambo Reserve and Rantambo is known you know for its tigers and the leopards and the sloth bears so it is quite logical that they are coming into this area but one thing that I find very surprising is that even though these things are happening in the wildlife is here like what I've learned is that people are very used to having wildlife coming through here and um, they've adapted you know their way of life so they've learned to coexist to some certain extent because it is very uh, very normal that uh, this wildlife is coming through this area There you go, blessings. <laughs> okay, so we've been blessed on yes. our way out. <laughs> yeah, as we're leaving this place, what I was realizing is that actually in one of the villages, you know, you have somebody who's had the sloth bear attack, but then you also have people working in an NGO to research the tigers. And I think it's really cool that it still shows, you know, that people are trying to actually learn more about these animals in this region. getting a good old wash as well amazing I didn't realize that we would be eating here but people have brought the food so that means picnic time <laughs> picnic time what is it this is poha poha and this is samosa samosa also oh my gosh seriously <gasps> yes that's <Yes>. amazing <laughs> but this is not rice so this is rice this is rice mm. oh you can take this also tasty ahi wala poha so we just finished our lunch which was absolutely delicious and as you can see everybody is enjoying the water people are getting splashed rocks are being skipped it's actually really nice to be out here in the sun <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> Things are getting dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wild wild west out here, baby. We finished, feet refreshed, sun tanned. <laughs> Time to go back and grab our stuff because we're actually going to head off to Rantambor now. So we've been stroking and petting this dog quite a bit. And on his back... Oh, <laughs> oh you almost scratched the lens. There's an attack mark from the leopard. This is where a leopard has actually attacked it. So it's quite a rough dog. <laughs> Okay. Well guys, on the way to the food court, we stumbled upon the Rantambo School of Art, or at least um, this guy here is making incredible paintings of tigers and sloth bears and leopards, everything, and um, the income also goes towards uh, the conservation of these animals, which is really, really cool. So I'm really excited to actually go to Rantambo tomorrow, but uh, his art is absolutely incredible. today has been quite the eventful day it's been very interesting to go into the villages and talk with people there to hear their personal experiences and also see how they are living and managing you know the wildlife passing through that area it is really interesting that you know they are so habituated to this wildlife being in this area because they have been there for generations and so has the wildlife 
So I think it's quite cool that we can conclude that there is another corridor going on that isn't a forested area, it is more agricultural land. And we can confirm this pretty much by all of the sightings that are being reported by people in the area. But of course, to do further research, we're going to have to hang up more camera traps and uh, gain more information about which ones are going through that area and how they are traveling, etc, etc. So that, that is definitely the next step, I think, for Hope and Beyond. The next step for me, though, is after hearing all the stories of the wildlife on the outskirts of Ranthambore, tomorrow I'm finally going into Ranthambore and hopefully we can spot a tiger, a leopard, a sloth bear, anything, um, and see these beautiful animals in the wild. This is where we're going to end the video for today, but trust me, tomorrow we're going on the safari, so you're going to want to join that video too. In the next episode, we go into the famous Rantambor National Park to take our chances at spotting tigers in their natural forested habitat.